In this segment, we're going to talk about buildings going green or green buildings. The impact of the Obama administration on green building is going to be to make it a permanent part of the economic, cultural, and financial landscape. The federal government just put out $80 billion in contracts last week for energy efficiency upgrades by private organizations in federal buildings. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to see every new large federal building be a LEED certified green building. We're going to see it in at least 25, if not 35 states, mandating that all new buildings have to be green certified buildings. We're going to see this in hundreds and hundreds of cities, in hundreds of universities. There's going to be a lot of federal money going into this and a lot of firepower also at the state level. The real impact on the green building industry is going to be a positive psychology and a lot of money. So people are going to see that this is a thing that's favored. They're going to put private investment behind this. People are going to make career choices to go into this field. And we're going to see a tremendous growth in domestic energy production of the non-oil variety. What we're likely to see happen over the next four years is the federal government will take its rightful place as a major player in the green building landscape, promoting green buildings, enacting regulations to promote them, financing green buildings by state and local government, and offering incentives to the private sector to make this stuff happen on a grand scale. Buildings, when you trace it back, are responsible ultimately for about half of the fossil fuel energy that's burned in the country. Obviously, as our population continues to increase, we're going to need to continue building buildings. But the real challenge there is how do we do that without affecting our climate? Green building is all about looking at how we design our buildings and operate our buildings and moving towards carbon neutral, towards energy efficiency, renewable energy, and getting us towards climate solutions. For the next few minutes, let's talk about LEED certification. LEED meaning Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Developed by the U.S. Green Building Council, USGBC, LEED provides building owners and operators a concise framework for identifying and implementing practical and measurable green building design, construction, operations, and maintenance solutions. LEED is an internationally recognized certification system that measures how well a building or community performs across all metrics that matter most. Energy savings, water efficiency, CO2 emissions reductions, improved indoor environmental quality, and stewardship of resources and sensitivity to their impacts. LEED is flexible enough to apply to all building types, commercial as well as residential. It works throughout the building life cycle, design and construction, operations and maintenance, tenant fit out, and significant retrofit. Okay, this is the exciting part. Becoming LEED certified building, the capstone microturbine will gain points with the certification in two major areas that LEED measures. One of energy and atmosphere, and also innovation in design. One last video. This is the capstone microturbine in action. It's a retrofit in a building built in 1886. The Divinity Press building was a cornerstone of the East Village in 1886 and remains a prominent fixture today. Back then, it took 14 months to build the former printing press one brick at a time at a cost of $200,000. Andy Fisher and his father likely paid a little more than that when they purchased the landmark property in the 1980s and in 2006 made it the new home of Astor Wine and Spirits. But the star of this story isn't the brick building or even the bubbly housed inside it. It's this baby right here.
Described as the cleanest engine on the planet, these two microturbines have infused the 19th century building with 21st century technology, generating enough electricity to power half the massive structure and using what's left over to heat or cool the store downstairs and education rooms above. Each one is producing 65 kilowatts of power and uh, about 408,000 BTUs of hot water or 20 tons of air conditioning. Corey Glick of RSP Systems recently gave a tour of the turbines to dozens of architects and engineers. The seminar was arranged through the U.S. Green Buildings Council of New York. The challenge for us is not so much what do we do, uh, how do we make our new buildings the best that we can. We need to do that. Um, but the real challenge in New York is, is how do we address our existing buildings in terms of energy efficiency. While some play catch up, Glick says others are getting in on the ground floor, with generators being installed at new construction sites around the city. Like you would normally specify a boiler and a chiller, they'd park one of these capsule micro turbines alongside and allow that to produce the first stage power and thermal energy for the building. And while the price of the units vary, Glick says the micro turbines ultimately pay for themselves. Since he says a building this size could shave roughly $60,000 a year from its electric bill, it's no wonder they're generating such buzz.